Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In Gaza, Israel struck the densely populated Jabalia refugee camp again today, one day after Israeli air attack killed at least 50 people and injured another 150. This is a doctor who treated victims of the Jabalia attack at the Indonesian hospital, where surgeons had to operate in the hallways as the facility was overrun with patients. A large number of injured have come to us. After the large explosion that shook the entire Jabalia refugee camp, hundreds of injuries, hundreds of martyrs, they were just sitting in their homes. They were targeted while they were in their homes. Children, all martyrs, children, women, elderly. We have no idea what to do. They are injured everywhere. All the volunteers went down hand in hand just to help people. The World Health Organization's warning of an imminent public health catastrophe in Gaza, with some surgeries performed without anesthesia due to the dire shortage of medical supplies. Mohammed Abu al Kamsan, an engineer with Al Jazeera's Gaza Bureau, lost 19 members of his family, including his father and two sisters, in Israeli air raids on the Jabalia camp. Meanwhile, the first evacuations from Gaza through the Rafah border crossing with Egypt have begun. Officials are expected to let people with foreign passports and dozens of critically injured residents leave Gaza. The temporary border opening is part of a deal brokered by Qatar. In Washington, D.C., protesters on Tuesday repeatedly disrupted a Senate panel hearing for Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. Their testimony was in support of President Biden's request for $106 billion to fund the militaries of Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, and to militarize the U.S.-Mexico border. This is Anne Wright, former U.S. Army colonel and Code Pink member. This comes as House Republicans are proposing stripping $14 billion in IRS funding to fulfill Biden's request for $14 billion for Israeli military aid. Senate Finance Committee Chair Ron Wyden said in response, quote, House Republicans are using aid for Israel as a political pawn in order to slash taxes for their wealthy donors. Making it easier for rich people to cheat on their taxes isn't an offset. It adds to the deficit, he said. Newly elected House Speaker Mike Johnson has also said he wants to sever funding for Ukraine from funding for Israel, setting up a likely showdown with Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. On Tuesday, senators confirmed former Treasury Secretary Jack Lew as the U.S. ambassador to Israel. At his confirmation hearing, Lew said Israel's security is paramount. Meanwhile, the White House evoked the white supremacists who marched in Charlottesville in 2017 when answering questions about Palestinian rights protesters. This is White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre responding to Fox reporter Peter Ducey. You guys don't talk about extremists all the time. It is usually about MAGA extremists. So what about these protesters who are making Jewish I've students feel very, unsafe very clear. on college campuses? Are they extremists? I've been very, very clear. We are calling out any form of hate. The head of the King Center, Dr. Bernice King, lawyer and daughter of Martin Luther King Jr., responded to a post by comedian Army Schumer, Amy Schumer, who shared a video of Dr. King condemning anti-Semitism and defending Israel's right to exist. Bernice King wrote, quote, "'Certainly my father was against anti-Semitism. He also believed militarism, along with racism and poverty, to be among the interconnected triple evils. I am certain he would call for Israel's bombing of Palestinians to cease,' she said. 
Here in New York, the longtime human rights attorney Craig McIver, director of the New York Office of UN High Commissioner of Human Rights, and stepped down in protest over the UN's failure to stop the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza, which he called a textbook case of genocide. He blamed the United States, the UK, and much of Europe for its complicity. We'll be joined by Craig McIver later in the broadcast. Meanwhile, Chile and Colombia have recalled their ambassadors to Israel, while Bolivia has cut diplomatic ties with Israel, citing crimes against humanity. Based on its principled stance of respect towards life, Bolivia has decided to break diplomatic relations with the Israeli state in repudiation and condemnation of the aggressive and disproportionate Israeli military offensive taking place in the Gaza Strip, which threatens international peace and security. In Belgium, Transportation unions have called on their over 3 million members to refuse to aid in the delivery of weapons to Israel, citing genocide against Palestinians. The unions called for a ceasefire and asked the Belgian government to not allow arms to travel through Belgian ports. Yemen's Houthi militia said it launched air attacks in southern Israel Tuesday in response to the, quote, brutal Israeli-American aggression in Gaza, unquote. Separately, Israel said it thwarted air attacks, but did not disclose the source. This comes after Saudi Arabia said four of its soldiers died last week while fighting Houthi rebels on its border with Yemen. The U.S. announced this week it's sending an additional 300 troops to the Middle East to, quote, support regional deterrence efforts. In Iran, authorities have detained prominent human rights lawyer Nasreen Sotoudeh. She was arrested and severely beaten by police Sunday while she attended the funeral of 16-year-old Armita Garavand, who died of brain injuries last week after she was reportedly assaulted by Iran's morality police at a Tehran subway station in early October. Police also attacked and arrested other activists and mourners at the funeral as they demanded justice for Garavand. Satuda has been arrested in prison several times before. Burma is formalizing efforts to repatriate Rohingya refugees who fled genocide and persecution since 2017. Burmese officials met with Rohingya refugee families in Bangladesh Tuesday to discuss the repatriation plan, which was negotiated by Burma, Bangladesh and China back in April. Burma said it's ready to accept the return of some 3,000 Rohingya refugees by December. But refugees have refused to go back, fearing further violence. Rohingya leaders said certain demands should be met, including resettlement to their own land and being granted citizenship. Rohingya community members have also said they've been threatened with accepting repatriation, while Burmese officials claim the move would be voluntary. Voluntary. About a million Rohingya refugees live in Bangladesh. Pakistani police have started arresting Afghans as part of a nationwide crackdown on immigrants. Over 4 million Afghans live in Pakistan. Islamabad says nearly 2 million of them are undocumented. Tens of thousands of Afghans were forced to return to Afghanistan in the last month, since Pakistani authorities threatened them with mass deportation if they didn't leave by November 1st, today. Many Afghans, who've called Pakistan home for decades, fear having to live under Taliban rule and say they have nothing to go back to in Afghanistan. We are helpless. We have nothing in our homeland. No home. Nowhere to go. For the past two days, we've been waiting here, but no one is doing anything about our crossing over. What should we do? Now that we have come here, we should at least be allowed to cross over. In Kenya, King Charles acknowledged Britain's, quote, deepest regret for its, quote, abhorrent and unjustifiable acts of violence committed against the former colony. But King Charles stopped short of an apology as he delivered his speech during a banquet as part of his four-day trip to Kenya. The Kenya Human Rights Commission had called on Charles to offer an unequivocal public apology. The group estimates the Mau Mau revolt in central Kenya between 1952 and 1960 killed or maimed some 90,000 Kenyans. Another 160,000 were detained. The U.K. agreed in 2013 to a £20 million settlement for the atrocities it committed. This is the great-grandson of King Kotelel Arap Samoy, a Nandi chief who fought to end British colonial rule at the turn of the last century. In fact, we don't request. In fact, we, we have to demand a public apology from the government of British 
of, because of the atrocities they meted on our people. The, f the first one is apology. After the apologies, we also expect a, a, a reparation. And the Michigan Attorney General's Office is closing its criminal pursuit of public officials responsible for the Flint water crisis, including former Governor Rick Snyder. It's been nearly a decade since Michigan leaders switched Flint's drinking water source to the Flint River to save money. The water corroded Flint's aging pipes, causing poisonous levels of lead to leach into the drinking water, causing many residents in the majority black city, particularly children, to develop health problems. An outbreak of Legionnaire's disease killed at least 12 people. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report.